before David responds, uh, you, if, if you still, whenever you're still writing for Idiot or Haaretz, do you, are you ever worried about the conflicts that will arise, that if you blog about something that they didn't like, have you ever had a situation where an editor has come to you and been like, how could you have said that? You're criticizing the publication you work for. This is bizarre because I'm very worried um, about, about this fact, and it never happened. It never happened. I'll tell you a secret, because Israelis don't read anything in English. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as simple as that, you know. You Google my name in Hebrew, the site in English comes up first. You can read, I'm trashing journalists for my own purpose. Not all the time, but sometimes. But, but Israelis, people just don't write that. So I'm getting like more and more, uh, I'm encouraged to go one step further each time. And, and this is this unbelievable disconnect between Israelis and Americans. And, and you know, Americans don't know that, that Haaretz and Jerusalem, those who are very knowledgeable about Israel read Haaretz and Jerusalem Post, but these are very tiny papers in Israel. And nobody knows the, the attitude in the street to a level that that's, can, can make them you know, can help them shape their perspective unless we have these informal ties through Facebook and Twitter and everything. And I'm, you know, and just on a social level, I started writing in English. Now I, I came to New York for, I've been here a couple of months, uh, and, and I meet all the time people I meet through to this social network. You know, Peter Baynard called and said, if you want to have coffee. So this is something that's only possible today. I wouldn't have known who Peter Baynard was if it wasn't for Facebook, but we're Facebook buddies. So sometimes <laughs> he, 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 he writes me a question and I respond to him or something like that. And I ask him something. And, and this is really, for me, as a journalist, it's unbelievable because as journalists, we were surrounded by people who were terrified of this change. David, please. With all respect to Peter Bernard, I met someone even more important, which is Nathan, <laughs> who's sitting here on my right, and I met him through Twitter, I must say, um, <laughs> and a minute. Um, speaking about social media, yes, I believe that Facebook and Twitter are the, the main platforms, are the, the important uh, platforms. And unlike uh, Noam, when I think about Facebook and Twitter, I mainly think about people who don't think the same way I think. I don't, I don't believe in preaching to the choir. I mean, it's important to bring arguments to the choir, it's important to bring arguments to our own community, to people who support or see Israel in the same way, but I believe that Twitter and Facebook are also means to reach audiences that in other circumstances they won't hear our message, they won't hear about Israel. They will remain with their own perception about Israel. And all of a sudden I have a tool with which I can reach these audiences and I can show them or I can uh, present to them a different perception or a different a, a, a fact about what they know about Israel. And from this point of view, I find Twitter and Facebook as important tools to reach other audiences, to reach, a, not to reach my own community or people who, who perceive the situation like we perceive or they know about Israel. And, and, and therefore I see it as, as an important tool. And just similar to what I asked Noam, if you're publishing um, from your own Twitter account or own Facebook account, are you ever worried about what the foreign ministry is going to think? Have there ever been situations where they've asked you about things? That Noam was talking about the Israeli society. Why do you think Israeli diplomats are different? Israeli diplomats are also most of the same. I mean, when they see something which is not happening in their own territory, when they see something in English, they don't believe that they go and read it every day. So, yes, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't find something which is not, let's say, uh, which is heavily criticizing the Israeli uh, uh, policy. But having said that, 
when I blog for the Huffington Post, I allowed myself sometimes to show or to reflect a, 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 an opinion which is not necessarily the official a, a policy of Israel. And when we're speaking about Israel, and I'm sure that most people who, who sit here, they understand that sometimes there is no official policy on certain topics. Sometimes it's more or less you know, within a margin of, of views and, as, uh, and, and, and it's something legitimate sometimes to reflect your own perce perception on a, diff on a certain point and, uh, but overall, usually when I, when I blog, usually when I, I bring a, my own opinion, I don't heavily criticize the Israeli uh, government, but having said that, as I mentioned, Sometimes you will find arguments which are which are not hundred percent with the the policy of the.